hey guys welcome back to another medical coder video if you are new to my channel my name is Shamira I am an obstetrics and gynecology coder I've been coding this specialty for two years now but I've been a coder since 2016 so we're just gonna jump right in and you guys are going to watch me code Okay, so right here, I am reading an operative note for a robotic-assisted total laparoscopic hysterectomy with bilateral salpingectomy. Salpingo-oophorectomy, sorry. <laughs> what that means is they're going to be doing the surgery robotically, and you can look on Google like robotic surgeries. They kind of go in using a robot to do this surgery laparoscopically. The hysterectomy is they're removing the patient's uterus and they're gonna take both fallopian tubes and the ovaries. So the codes that I am going to report for this, it also depends on your size of the uterus when it comes to the code that you're gonna choose. But for this patient, her uterus was less than 250 grams. So I went with the 58571, and then you also need the HixPix code um, S2900. I don't have a HixPix book, but I do, you know, kind of memorize some of the codes from doing them so long. And then my ICD-10 codes were for a uh, endometriosis on the left ovary as well as on the parametrium. After that, I had a vaginal delivery, and this patient came in for a fetal growth restriction, so the baby was um, low for their birth weight, and she was at 39 weeks. So my CPT code that I billed was the 59400. It always depends on the insurance, depending on which code you are going to report for these vaginal deliveries and if it were a VBAC. So did the patient have a C-section prior and now she's having a vaginal delivery? So you wanna make sure you know what type of delivery code to bill. And then for my ICD-10 codes is the 036.5930 for the um, intrauterine growth restriction, Z3A39 for weeks of gestation, and then Z37.0 for the newborn being live born. So when I first started coding, I was a coder one. So I was only doing evaluation and management services. Those are the codes that are in the very front of your CPT book. And I was a hospitalist coder one, and that specialty was internal medicine. So in 2020, I became a surgical coder for obstetrics and gynecology. So now I will review a little bit of ENM, but mainly procedures and surgeries. And um, what helped me in the very beginning was during my training period and throughout, I'll even do this to this day. If I have like a surgery that I'm not sure about or a procedure I'm not sure about, I would add it to this spreadsheet that I call my OB coding cases or something like that. And I save the medical record number. I save the CPT code that I thought it should have been. And I put on my diagnosis codes as well. So during my training period, 
I would do this. And then my um, coworker that was training me, she would go into the system and review everything that I did. If she made any changes to it, she would let me know what she thought it should have been or what she, um, how she would have built it. And then I would add to that spreadsheet, my personal spreadsheet. She has, nobody has no idea that I do this. I do this on my own. I will put in red the CPT code that it should have been or the diagnosis code that I missed or that I should have changed it to in red. I put comments on there just so um, I remember like my thought process or her, her thought process. And I keep a running log of all that information on one spreadsheet. It's probably to up to 200 to 300 lines by now. And I feel like that is perfect for anybody that is new because I'm one of those people if somebody teaches me something or um, I am not sure about something I want to be able to go back to reference in case it comes up again or in case I'm asked like okay why would you choose this code well I had a similar case before and because you have that medical record number you can pull up your note and compare it to the note that you have currently in question you can see any comments that you left especially if you code multiple surgeries or specialties i should say you definitely should do this if you are new but yeah i thought i would share that tip for you guys right here i was coding a delivery but when i went to check the patient's prenatal visits to make sure we provided all of them i noticed that the patient had a coverage change so for the first few visits, she had Medicaid, and then halfway through, up until delivery, she had a commercial plan. So for the Medicaid visits, they built e &Ms, which was correct for that plan that she had. But for commercial payers, they want you to bill the 59425 or the 59426 if you're not billing global. And you have to go and count up how many prenatal visits she had with the commercial plan. I believe this patient had six visits total um, during a specific date range, and I have to bill that out. And then for the delivery code, we bill for the vaginal delivery only and postpartum care, which is the 59410 if you're billing a vaginal delivery, or if you were billing a C-section, it would be the 59515. And then if it were a VBAC, I barely bill VBACs, so I think it's like the 59614 maybe, or is it 16? I can't remember. And then they also have a um, attempted VBAC, but then ended up being a C-section. Don't ask me what that code is because I barely built that one. So the point is you only bill for the delivery and the postpartum care whenever you bill for the antepartum period separate.
working from home can be boring as you guys can see how quiet it is right now usually i'll have a tv show on or movie on i rarely listen to music um and i don't listen to audiobooks but i kind of want to start listening to audiobooks i don't know because whenever audiobooks are on i'm barely paying attention so yeah right now i am pumping while i work i usually pump maybe two times during an eight hour shift usually i'll pump between 5 a.m and 7 a.m and then my next pump is around 11 a.m to 12 p.m right before lunch i'll pump and then i'll eat to nourish myself back up and that way around my 4 p.m 5 p.m i can pump again and then if i'm lucky i'll get another pump session at around 7 30 p.m or 8 p.m if i'm lucky Okay, so that eight ounce bottle that I just pumped, I put to the far left, and as he needs milk, I'll pull from the furthest, from the right. All three of the smaller bottles I pumped yesterday, and that's pretty much the rotation that we are on. So I will take the eight ounce bottle tomorrow morning and pour them into two smaller bottles. My son does not drink eight ounce bottles. I don't know how babies drink all that milk. He does not drink that much. Um, he'll have like four and a half ounces when he first wakes up, but then I'll give him breakfast, whether that be oatmeal, pancakes, French toast, eggs, those type of things. And then maybe an hour after that, he'll want another four and a half ounce. Oops, I got to close this fridge. Um, 
but yeah those are the bottles that he likes the smaller ones we have not gotten to the bigger ones yet where he drinks the entire eight or nine ounce bottle heck no that milk will go to waste so yeah that's where we are i no longer freeze milk because it's pointless i just have all refrigerated milk now and my freezer stash is completely gone i did notice that when you thaw out the frozen milk it does smell a little weird so i like to give him as fresh milk as possible and i no longer freeze milk Another thing that I'm gonna do quick is create a little spelling practice sheet for my son. He gets 10 spelling words that he has to study for his spelling test every, I think it's the sixth cycle day at school. So I'm just gonna type up these 10 words and then I'm going to also include words that are misspelled correctly so that way he can circle the correct one. Yeah, I like doing stuff like this. I feel like in my past life I was a teacher and I love creating things like this for my kids whether it be stuff related to spelling, math related. Um, I don't really create anything for like reading and writing but I may have them write about what they read. I was one of those kids that loved to play school when I was younger so I'm not surprised that I'm doing this. Alrighty, so getting back to work because as you guys can hear baby boy is awake which my work day is almost over i'll be done at 1 30. it's nice waking up and starting at 5 a.m because then you get done at 1 30 and that's around his lunch time so i don't even have to worry about working past that point um working on some office procedures which are pretty easy to review we have a colposcopy of the cervix and we're going to be doing a biopsy and an endocervical curatage. My CPT code that I'm going to use is 57454. And then for the diagnosis, she tested positive for um, being high risk for HPV on the cervix. So that's R87810. And you want to check pathology before you choose the code that was used or that was the reason for the procedure because you might get a more definitive diagnosis.
All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I want to thank you all for watching. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.